All right. I'm excited. I know you're excited, too. This is the third round of Swiss play at the Ball Cambridge, not Boston, uh, Netrunner Regional Tournament 2014. It took place on June 21st at Pandemonium Books and Games, Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'm on the left. On the right, my opponent, Chris W. Second player I've played named Chris in round one. Uh, just to recap, I got a buy because my opponent pre-registered, but it was a no-show, so it was a crappy buy with no with awful tiebreakers. Uh, in round two, I played Chris M. Uh, only one of those games recorded successfully. <laughs> uh, the second game, uh, I split with Chris M. So I'm coming into this round with six prestige points. I'm on the left playing Kate. Chris W is on the right playing Replicating Perfection. Replicating Perfection is getting popular again. That used to be like the bad identity that you don't use. Um, nowadays, it seems like the bad identities you don't use are Wayland because we built it, and, um, you know, I guess uh, the HV um, Custom Biotics. Custom Biotics, if they just let you use Jinteki cards in that. Oh, it'd be so glorious. Oh, you can make the best deck ever. But no. It wasn't meant to be, I guess, because you could make the best deck ever. Okay, so with that in mind, what else is there to say about this second round of Swiss? Um, someone commented on the previous video that's a little dark. Uh, as well, you know, Pandemonium, they ran this tournament extremely well. The store was, I, you know... There's nothing bad to say about the store, except the lighting was not so great. I think that's the only negative thing. Everything else about them was amazing. I highly recommend you go there. And you won't be taking videos, most likely. So, I mean, there was plenty of light to play there, you know, but video requires uh, an exceptional amount of light that I don't have. Okay, so, game starts off with a celebrity gift. I see a lot of people doing this, when even if they have an agenda in hand. Um... Personally, I don't know if I've said this before, I don't like Celebrity Gift, right? Now that I see these cards, I know the game, right? I know everything there is to know. There's no mysteries involved. You know, the information is so much more valuable. I'll glad... Oh, thanks for installing that pup there, right? It's The information is so valuable. Let me get some money so I can pay for your pup. I know there's nothing in HQ. Why should I run there? I know there's a pup on R&D, so let me dirty laundry it. You gonna res your pup? Yes, you will. I'll pay two for it and get back five. Oh, okay. And I'll see something. Gonna trash it. Oh, yep. The mental health clinic. The reason I trashed the mental health clinic uh, was because he gets a credit as soon as he puts it down, right? Uh... There's pretty much no way to prevent him from getting the credit, to the bonus off it. So, something I want to trash right away. Unlike a pad campaign, where, you know, if you trash a pad campaign or an Adonis, you know, when the corp reses those kinds of assets, or a marked accounts, they spend a click to fill it up. When they do that, they are... Uh, spending a small amount at least. In EVE, they're spending a very large amount. Uh, so, if you tra you wait for them to res it and then trash it. Um, or at least force them to protect it somehow. If you... You know, mental health clinic though, they don't... They gain by installing it and resing it. So, if you see it, just trash it immediately. Alright, parasite that pup so I don't have to pay two credits every time I run R&D. And let's run R&D. With some indexing. Immediate indexing. Yeah, I don't know if his deck is a low ice deck, uh, but we've seen one piece of ice so far. I don't like the low ice in Replicating Perfection. I think for Replicating Perfection, no matter which kind of replicating you're doing, you need at least all the centrals, including archives, to have one piece of ice that's resed that has a subroutine that the runner must break and it costs them more than nothing to break. Um, and that way, you know, it's not basically 
free for them to run uh, the remote, right? In this situation, it's like if I wanted to run that Sundew, which I'm pretty sure has a Caprice under it, I would have to run R&D and then, you know, which I was going to do anyway, or run HQ, which I guess has a CQ in it, and then run the remote. Now, this is going to come up, but I should mention it now because some of you are probably already thinking it, right? That Sundew obviously has a Caprice and Nisei under it. We saw the Celebrity Gift. Uh, oh, no, actually, I think we saw him draw it. Regardless, it's obviously a Caprice Nisei. I don't need to know his deck to know that. If Caprice Nisei is in a server, and the server has no ice, Caprice Nisei must already be rezzed before the runner says they're going to run it in order to have an effect, because as soon as I say I'm running, I've passed the last piece of ice, so her ability would trigger. She has to be rezzed before that ability triggers. The I'm going to access res window is already past Caprice Nisei's time. If you res her during that window... She won't do anything. Even You don't even have to have you res the ice that's on the server. You just need to have an ice on the server. And then when they say they're running, you don't res the ice, you just res Caprice. Then they pass that ice because it's unres, then Caprice triggers. Right? But having no ice, uh, res the Caprice to begin with. And this this will come up soon. Okay, so his deck is an ice light. You know, he managed to get some ice. Uh, and me having nothing in, on my table... And worrying slightly, at least, about, you know, maybe Neural Katana, who knows what, Koma Inu. Holding back a little bit, just took some money, got a sure gamble, plus my indexing, you saw, got me four points. But I don't like the fact that it enabled his uh, medical breakthroughs. Uh, but I do like the fact that it took a brain trust. Oh yeah, there he is, he has taxing ice in this deck. Okay, so now his Celebrity Gift money is actually going to start to do, and his Sundew money is actually going to start to do something, because he has ice to, uh, to res with it. Okay. Let's see what I can do. I'm going to run something. What am I running? Running HQ. Yeah, I figure he's not... Uh, Figure he's not going to res that. He has a Shikyu in his hand. I don't think he drew agendas, you know, because he, he, he drew... He didn't have ice before, and he's played a bunch of ice, telling me he drew ice and not agendas. So, uh, plus I index so I know what's going on. And it's, of course, the Shikyu. Okay. Uh, the way I see it, I have four points. If I go down to three, right, at four points, I'm going to need... I guess I could theoretically get a three-pointer. But the way I see it, I'm going to need two more agendas to win, right? So I don't mind him paying a bunch of money and taking a negative point. I'm at three now. Sure, I'll score two more. I was kind of planning to score two more anyway. Um, you know. Okay, so now I'm running the Sundew, and he's resing Caprice, and now I'm giving him the lecture. <laughs> yep, it's it's too late. You know, this is regionals, right? Norma, you know, normally I would let it slide. But it's regionals, um, so sorry, bro. Uh, I hope he remembered to take his money back. Let's let's see if he does. Take your two credits back. I'll let you. I'll let you do that. No, I mean, I, I guess, I guess technically speaking, right? Um, you know, he can choose to res Caprice, and it won't do anything. Uh, so it's not illegal play for him to spend the two credits. That's all right. I'll make it up to you later, bro. I will make it up to you. <laughs> but yeah, I told him the rule. Uh, I said call the judge. He, he didn't. So there you go. I guess, I, you know, if that happens again, I should probably, even though the person, you know, agrees with the rule that I told them, I should call the judge anyway just to, to confirm that what I say is true. Anyway, here he's res his another mental health clinic. He's already got a lot of monies. As a hedge fund, this even more monies. Okay. Ooh, is the medical breakthrough? Uh oh. That's a three for two now. A blank three for two, but if he's well, it's not really a blank three for two. Scoring it basically turns one card in your deck into a two for two, <laughs> which is not shabby. That's a pretty strong power. Okay, I think it's time to run uh, something. Get get him to res some ice here. He's already passed my index. 
running R&D. What is that? I can't even tell what that is from here. I think it's a guard? Is it a guard? <laughs> I can't, why can't I tell what that card is? Ah. <laughs> uh. I guess I guess it's a barrier of some kind because I dropped my inti. I don't even know. It didn't seem to do anything, so I think it, it just ends the run, uh, which is a bad choice, right? I guess it keeps me out of R and D, which is good uh, for him at this point, right? Where I'm, it's four zero. But on the other hand, um, it's not good because I can go to any remote I want by running that suffering no consequences, and then running a remote. So he's not getting the most out of his identity um, by having a good, uh, you know, a nice replicating style ice over there. Something like a, like a quandary. Oh, not a quandary. An enigma, right? And, and it's a good, this is a good example of a deck where you'd play enigma over quandary, right? What am I doing now? Dropping a magnum opus... Yeah, and the reason I'm getting my magnum opus is so I can get some mad money to trash his business. And because Inti is really inefficient, ridiculously inefficient. And I can't seem to get a data sucker in this game. Boy, if I had one, that would have been so helpful. Okay, he scores his three for two. That's what that's going to do. Uh, I ran R&D and, and broke it. Oh, you know what it is? That's a Himitsu Bako. That's what that is. I remember now. Oh boy. <laughs> Single R&D run. I paid three credits uh, for Himitsubako. I could tell it was a Himitsubako. Now I remember, right, from because I played the game. But yeah, it's a Himitsubako. And I could tell because I paid three credits. So I ran there, R&D, got lucky. Now, now I really only need one agenda to win. Uh, it's 5-2. I got both medical... I got his 2-for-2 two two medical breakthrough. That was really fortuitous. Uh, and then I ran... Uh, the remote and got rid of his mental health clinic. So the doctor is out. <laughs> doctor is not in. Okay, he's picking up a Timmy Tsubako and I think he's putting something else in. Hopefully something bigger. I think we saw him draw a toll booth. Um, maybe you put that there. That'd be pretty nasty right now. I mean, you know, with Inti and no data sucker, it would cost me, uh, let's see, four strength, four to eight to boost and one, two to break. So ten credits to break a wall of thorns with, a, with an Inti. <laughs> yeah, Inti's only good with data sucker people. And it's only good, it, it's good against people playing wraparound, stuff like that. It's not good for uh, real barriers at all. Really, it's only in the deck because wraparound. And I guess when there's Himi Tobacco, why not? Here's the thing I understand, right? He picked up the Himi Tobacco. That still taxes me, right? I guess it goes in his hand if you, you know, keep your hand diluted, whatever. Or maybe you could install it somewhere else. But you, to pick it up to save the install credit, it's like, well, you just paid a credit to pick up the Himi and then, right? So you might as well have installed in front of it for one. Unless you're planning to move it. Okay, so I run. It's a wall of thorns. Take a bunch of net damage. I lose an overmind and a parasite. 
Oh, oh, so what we were discussing here was... Um, I, f I think I forgot to discard uh, on the previous turn. Yeah. So because of that, uh, I get rid of an extra card. Nice right, celebrity gifting again. He's showing me four deadly cards, five deadly cards. So the last one must be an agenda, right? It must be. Nope, it's the toll booth. So I guess. All right. Well, he's obviously putting a shock in the archives. So not going there. Yes, hiding your ice. So you know you show five deadly cards. No one's ever going to run HQ. But I also know that pretty much anything you install is going to be deadly. So here we go. Test run. This fem out of the trash. Aim it at the Wall of Thorns. Two. Click two. Run there. Pay two to bypass. What do I see? Sundew. Trash that before you get to install it. Run there again for two. Some kind of ice. I think it's another Himitsubako. Scavenge. Keep the femme in place for free. All right. That's the end of Wall of Thorns. Oh, no. It's an Ichi 1.0 that I saw there. All right. Well, the score is 5 to 2. I need one more agenda. He needs five more points. I think part of what made this a little easy, right, is that a lot of people playing Replicating now, they play three NAPDs, Three feed lay eyes, three you know future perfects. They play all the hard to score agendas uh, for the runner. So it's like you can never just score. You get taxed when you try to score. Um, whereas here, you know, it's a not personal evolution Jinteki. If I touch an agenda, I just take it, which is so luxurious. Uh, it's so easy to just oh, there's an agenda. I'll take it. Ah. Ah. All right, so I'm taking eight credits. I know there's an Ichi 1.0 out there. Uh, he just replaced his wall thorns. Personally, I would have kept it there. Because uh, if I get another scavenge, the same old thing scavenge, I can just put the fem on the new ice. Whereas if he left the wall of thorns there and I had done that, the wall of thorns would still be there and be a pain in the butt. So I couldn't take the fem off of it. So I draw a ton of cards, and I find a Desperado. Because I needed some memory. Throw out this Overmind. I didn't get Overmind going early enough to be useful. Throwing out some more cards. Atman. Okay. If I need it, you know, if there's more Wall of Thorns type action or something, uh, I can set Atman at 5. Atman. All right, he's loading up his remote, which is two ice deep, and I do not have a decoder of any kind. Oh, now I have a decoder. <laughs> the, the, the three inefficient breakers. Wow, at least I have a magnum opus. Oh, it's a sundew. So he's put a sundew in his giant mega server. That's really interesting. Okay, then. And I'm taking a mad money because my breaker is real inefficient. But I can wait. Uh, I'm not in a hurry here because I'm so far ahead in the game. I just need one more point. Even if he draws agendas and tries to score them, uh, I know there's plenty in R&D and there's only one ice on it. Uh, and he seems, you know, since I have all three breakers and a magnum opus, um, you know, he seems to be defending his remote there. 
because he knows I can just get into it by, you know, run a central, run the remote, and I can get in as long as I have enough money, which I have a lot of money. Yep, so he's stacking up that remote, because I, I don't think he has a way to fast advance in this deck. Um, and he doesn't even have, his medical breakthroughs are all gone. So I think he absolutely needs a secure remote with the Caprice Nisei to have uh, any scoring opportunity. Alright, this is the same old thing. Gonna try to index with that, probably. But first I'm gonna take a bunch of money to make sure this totally works. And I want to index on the first click uh, of the turn to give myself the most... Well, I guess I only need one more run, right? Yeah. If you're one agenda away from winning, you're not gonna need multiple runs, so you can index on click three. If you if, if, if it's possible for you to do it, right? Uh, but I have no idea what ice that is. Oh! Yeah, as an agenda, I could have taken that. Oh well. That's going in a tiny remote. Interesting. It's my turn. Same old thing indexing. Same old thing. Is it indexing? It better be. Scavenge. Ah, same old thing. Scavenge the fem onto R and D. That's not. That's not too bad either. Just to make sure. Thank you. And oh, I had an indexing in my hand. That's why I needed the clicks, because I needed two clicks for the same old thing. Third click indexing. Yep. There's the Ichi. I spend three credits to bypass, and I'm gonna index. What do I see? He only gave me four cards. There's the fifth one. Gonna put them in some kind of order. I think there's a future perfect in there, and that's it. Oh boy. So I run, I bypass again. There's a future perfect. And we're going to play the side game. So one-third chance of winning the game for me. Uh, for him, two-thirds chance of uh, keeping the future perfect in his hand. I'm using my magic die, which is extremely good at the side game. And I pent two. He spent one. I lose the side game. No. It's all right. Well, his turn. Mandatory draw. We know there's a future perfect in his hand, but I'm not going to run it. Because I saw what's in there. Snare, snare, shiq, shiq, and look how much money he has. Um, then again, I can afford to take a shiq negative point. Because I'll go down from 5 to 4, but I only... Oh, crap. There was a brain trust in that remote. So now, suddenly, it's 5 to 4. <laughs> five, his score is 5 to 4. Um, and he has a 3-pointer in hand. Uh, taking that, you know, me scoring it or him scoring it. That could be game either way. Okay, well, I know R&D has nothing, because I just indexed. Um, so all I can really do is, is chill out, right? I know HQ has nothing, uh, except for the one future perfect. But I don't really want to die running there. Um, so I guess I should just take eight credits? Yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking eight credits, it looks like. that's I think that's the right move. Um... You know, there's nothing in HQ except the three-pointer, which is surrounded by death. Um, and there's nothing in R&D for a few more cards. So. Oh, so look at this. This is really smart by him. Install, advance, advance. So he's basically saying, all right, look, next turn I'm going to win. That you know is a three-pointer. It doesn't matter that you know. It's behind three ice, and I have a ton of money. Look how much money he's got, right? I can res all these ice. You have to run a central first. <laughs> right? So at most, if you can, you know, break through my three ice three times, you'll have three chances. And that's almost 100% Caprice Nisei under there. So you might, even if you get through all the ice, you might not score this three-pointer. And if you fail... And if I fail to take it this turn, and he ends the turn with three credits, that's game, because he's at four points. 
That is pretty crazy right there. So I really have no choice but to run there um, and go for it. So I'm like, run there. He's like, no, sorry, I'm replicating perfection. Oh, dang it. <laughs> dang it. <laughs> All right, I'll run one of the other servers. I'll run R&D, pay three. I will access. I'm bypassing the Ichi for three because I have a fem on it. I see a card I know is safe. Um, but I get my Desperado credit. And now I'll run the remote on click two. So he reses a pup. Yep, yep. I probably could have just taken the two net damage on this. Um, but, you know, you never know uh, what kind of ice you're going to see behind there. Who knows? You know, there might be some net damage or something. Okay, Himitsubako, I guess I had to pay three for that. That's probably the one he picked up before. So good idea picking it up if you're going to put it on somewhere else like that. I have no choice. I have to pay three. I still have 11 credits. So that's not bad. He raises his final ice. Which is the toll booth. So I can break it for three and five, eight credits for me to get through the toll booth with a key master. Okay, so what's interesting here, right, is technically speaking, he has to res Caprice at the same time he reses toll booth, right? I didn't let him get away with his incorrect Caprice res timing the first time. So this time I let him do it. Uh, even though I could have called a judge and said, hey, he didn't res the Caprice at the right time. It doesn't happen. I win the game. Uh, I figured that was BS, sort of, right? It, it takes all the fun out of it. So um, I just let him know next time, you know, this is how when you have to res Caprice. Don't mess it up later in the tournament. I need your tiebreakers to work out for me. Okay, this side game... This side game is it probably for the game. And zeros. Oh, that's it. That's it. I win. Game over. Side game for the win. Oh, my God. I had a one-third chance of winning. He had two-thirds chance. I only had one credit after breaking all those icebreakers. But there was something interesting here in that he only had two credits left after raising all those ice. Uh, so he could not have actually scored the future perfect on the next turn, but then again, I don't think I could have uh, taken six and broken in. Let's see, two net damage, three, and then eight. So I need 11 credits. I would only had seven. I don't think there was any way for me to get back into that server the next turn with credits left over to play the side game with. Oh, but I had a scavenge in my hand. Uh, so I could have scavenged the fem over. I actually could have made it with that scavenge because it would have been two net damage, three and one for four. Uh, so take six. I might have not, still not had enough to play the side game. I don't know. That's a close call, but uh, yeah, if he didn't res the pup. Yeah, woof. Still, uh, really exciting stuff there. Last ditch run. Effectively, one Capri side game for the win. Um, wasn't it much more exciting letting him res the Caprice instead of, uh, you know, calling the judge and saying, hey, this guy doesn't know when he's supposed to res Caprice, so I win? Yeah. I think at nationals or worlds, right, uh, as opposed to regionals, I would have said sorry. Uh, but I already did it once uh, in the game, and I felt bad. Um, so didn't want to do it a second time. But yeah, hopefully, uh, Chris W, res your Caprice. If you have no ice on the server, you have to res Caprice before the runner's turn even starts. That way, if they say they're going to run it, or at least I guess if you're replicating, they run a central, then res Caprice before they say they can run the remote. And if there's no ice on Caprice, she'll still happen. If um, there's one ice on the server, you have to res Caprice at the same time that you res the final ice uh, on the server. Or at least before, you know, they pass the final ice. So, like, let's say you have two ice on the server. You res the first one, it's pup. They say, okay, second ice or final ice. And you say, no res, but I'm resing Caprice. Then, right, then they pass the final ice and Caprice triggers. Um, if they pass the final ice and, they, and you say, are you accessing... Yes, I'm accessing. Res Caprice. Well, if they've already passed the final ice. That time, so Caprice is res. Sure, it's a legal move, but her ability does not trigger.
This is very important, people. Caprice is a really strong card, really powerful, uh, but you can basically make it worthless. It's one to trash uh, if you don't know how to use it properly. Uh, Chris W. learned an important lesson, and you can see <laughs> I got ridiculously lucky on that side game. Go purple dice. My lucky dice. Win the side game for me. Win the game. So here we go. Game two. Uh, round three. I now have only lost one game. So, and since it's round three, I have two, four, six, I have eight prestige points. Uh, going for ten here. Okay, great draw. Install, install hedge fund against Kate. Looking good. Looking good. If I remember correctly, his Kate deck, he was playing all sorts of cards uh, that I do not see played very often. So this, this should be interesting just to see how he rolls. He's going to face check. Caduceus. I think I'm going to get my money back here. Trace five for money. I don't think he's going to pay four. Yep, I'll take my money back. Thank you. Trace two to end the run. Is he going to pay one to look at one card? Most people do. Thank you. What do you see? You see a hedge fund. Oh, it could have been an asterisk script. First turn Caduceus usually is really, really good. Except for those Andromedas who drop the instant mimic. <laughs> All right. Magnum Opus, and with his remaining four credits, he puts the Magnum and takes the four credits back. Let's start taxing. Let's send the IRS to pay a visit to Miss Kate. Or not. Let's draw some cards, because we don't have anything. <laughs> Well, I think the reason I'm drawing is because I've been I was doing a much better job this tournament of uh, at least early in the day, you know, remembering to draw before I did things. Right? I sat there, you know, before I did anything on a turn, I'd say, "Am I going to draw after I do that?" Yes, I am. Well, then I should draw first. I will draw first to see if I have a better option. Oh, he's got some icebreakers. That Gordian Blade is going to cut up all my code gates. Most of my deck is code gates, so great. That's the other thing, is when you draw first, right, you end up with a lot to think about because you have more options. All right, setting up the remote. Draw, install, install. Is that a fairy I see in a Kate deck? Not bad. You can recur it a lot of times, get through a lot of sentries for real cheap. Uh, that's a lot of influence, though, especially if you have more than one. Taking some money. Oh, he's got a pro co, uh, pro context, and a magnum opus. So when he draws, he gets a credit, and when he just needs money, he gets two. But that basically, that's you know, the re it sets him back so much. He basically spent the whole early game right setting all that stuff up. He's got a fairy. He runs the remote. It's a wraparound. You know, this gave me time to to draw, get the lay of the land. Um, too bad. I guess I didn't draw cards that would help me rush. Uh, which would have been really good, you know, to rush after he installed the Pro Contacts. Yeah. 
What card is that? <laughs> what did I install? Oh, I'm installing something else. Oh, it's Jackson Howard. Install draw two. And set up a new remote. That must be a pad campaign. Alright, I had too many cards in my hand. I put one in the trash. Am I dumping in extra agenda? A replicator. Whoa. Whoa. Well, he goes and gets another replicator. Because that's what you do. Guys, pro tip. You're playing Jinteki. You have a personal workshop. You have a replicator in the workshop. Or maybe some other hardware in the workshop also. Or your replicator is already out and you have some hardware in the workshop. Run. Take some net damage. You're about to die. Use your credits to bring those cards out of your workshop. And then draw the copied hardware out of the stack. And it's like drawing cards. It's like paying to draw cards during the corpse turn. Preventing death. Yeah, that's not the greatest idea. Just use Deus Ex. Alright, he's running HQ now. It's a quandary. A sentry, a barrier, and a code gate. Well, you're going to need all three if you want access to all three servers. We saw a Gordian Blade in his hand, so he could raid HQ if he so desired. Here's a pad campaign. Hmm. Draw two. Do I see anything I like yet? Gonna install. That's an ash going on there. And gonna install another R and D ice. Uh, Cause he does have a fairy, so I'm afraid of say Maker's Eye or indexing or something like that coming up uh, out of a shaper. He didn't do it already, uh, but it could happen at any moment. Now his economy is fully in gear. Alright, there's the Gordian Blade. He's running HQ. I am holding some stuff. Okay, he doesn't get it. Oof. He's going for it again. No, he doesn't get anything else. Is that because I just dumped into to archives? Decreased my density a little bit. Okay, he's going after HQ again. Nope. Oof. Okay, a pad campaign. Thanks for letting me keep my pad campaign. It would be so easy for him to trash it. He is a magnum opus and a procon. There's no reason to let that pad campaign slide. Uh, I may have a lot of money now, so it may seem pointless. You know, like it doesn't matter that I get even more, but no. That money will go fast. Especially if I res a sand sand. Okay. No, nope, there's Gordian Blade. I block with another ice, play a hedge fund. Yeah, I was holding a beal. Got lucky in those HQ runs. He didn't take it. Throwing more stuff out. Okay. He's running the archives. Gonna use Jackson. Take it back. Mystery card. Mystery card. Hedge fund. And... There's a roto turret, which I threw away because you have a fairy. And I'm not paying four to not surprise you and not trash your program. I pretty much only want to pay four for roto turret. Like, I'll install it, but I'll only pay four to res it if it's going to trash your program. Otherwise, forget it. Okay, well, he knows he can break the, the quandary on HQ. And he has a fairy. Uh, so he doesn't seem to be too afraid to run HQ, but there's only one new unknown ice there. It's a wraparound, so I'm keeping you out. Uh, but yeah, it doesn't, you maybe spend two. Great, nice, you know, why wouldn't you run there? There's no reason. Alright, Dyson Memchip. Is he replicating the Dyson Memchip? 
Yes, he's replicating the Dyson Mem chip. Ooh. Ooh, replicating the Dyson Mem chip. Ooh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now he has two Link. <laughs> oh, boy. That cancels out my ability. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I thought I'd learned this lesson earlier, that my deck uh, hurts against Link. But I slightly forgot it <laughs> again. <laughs> but yeah, he's got two Link, and he's got a third Link in hand. That's not good times for, breaking, uh, for making news. It's hard to make news when... Uh, the runner is so linked up, they already know all the news. Pet campaign. Here we go. Jackson's gone. So it's time to San San and score this Beal with a shipment from San San. So I saved two credits there, which is important because I might need those to res stuff or something else. Still hasn't trashed my pad campaign. Um, and I've got a Res Sansan, -san, and it doesn't look like he can get rid of my Res Sansan, -san, even though he's got the monies. I don't see a Barrier Breaker. Do not see a Fractor. Sorry, someone outside is like mowing a lawn or something ridiculous. It, um, my microphone might be picking it up, it might not be. I'm not sure. pretty loud. I live in New York City. That kind of stuff happens. Not that there's any lawns out there, so I don't maybe he's weed whacking, I don't know. Some kind of equipment. All right, underworld context time. Underworld context to go with his 3 link. Uh Oh boy. I'm going to close the curtains. I don't know if that's going to reduce the noise at all. Wow, he's got so much economy. He gets a credit when he draws a card. He gets a credit when his turn starts. And if he needs more money, he can take two. But it's cost him a lot. So here we go. I had a breaking news. He's tagged. I think I'm going to trash the Underworld Contacts. It was a tough choice whether to trash that or trash the Procon. I could only do one or the other. Uh, I couldn't do both. I figured the Underworld, you know, it would be hard for him to get another one. If he had had more than one, uh, he would have installed them already earlier. Um, you know, he'll try to dig for another one. Uh, if he spends clicks, you know, his economy, even though he has a lot of economy cards... Uh, goodbye, Pad Campaign. He does not have... Uh, a lot of credits total right now. A closed accounts wasn't worth it. Look, he has one credit. So my Sansan -san is pretty safe. Uh, and if he spends clicks on his Procon trying to draw another Underworld, that is only going to help my Sansan -san, uh, stay alive longer. And hedge fund, so back in the money... He has a test run. He could go for the Sand Sand. Uh, and I resin Ash, but I'm resing Ash against a uh, Link of Three, which is really annoying. Which means, so if I boost the Ash Trace all the way to six, it costs him three to beat the Trace, uh, which is the same as uh, paying three to trash Ash. All right, test run. I guess that's going to be a Fractor. He's got tons of memory. It's a Corroder. Three ridiculously efficient Icebreakers, and a Magnum Opus, and a Procon, and Link. What can't he deal with? I think the only weakness he has right now is that he just doesn't have a lot of money total at this moment. And if he spends one turn taking eight credits, uh, that will all change. It's also three to nothing. 
Um, but he can run anywhere he wants to. All right, and Kuroda goes back up top. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, okay. He was. <laughs> I thought I was. he didn't cut after he dug out his Kuroda. I'm like, oh, no, am I putting the Kuroda in the middle? But no, he was holding the Kuroda up there. So not a fry. I didn't cheat. Install. It's probably a new pad campaign. Does he have five cards? Yep, sweep. Money. Oh, he had four cards. I sweep for three. And it is now his turn. Draws the Corroder. Install the Corroder. Boom. He sees that Sansan San is five to trash, and he sees that he has five. He takes two and runs there. Uses one to break the wraparound. And I res Ash for two, trace six. So he can't afford to trash both. If he beats the trace, he won't be able to afford to trash the Sansun. So beating the trace is pointless. Uh, he should tra just trash Ash for three, and I believe that is what he will do. Even though he has three Link, um, that doesn't really affect the situation at all. Uh, so, all right, I res pad campaign. I'm managing to put down enough, you know, even with hardly anything going on here. You know, it's without giving him a turn to take eight credits. I'm putting the hurt on. He doesn't actually start or end a turn with very much money at all. If I give him a break and let him take eight for a turn, uh, that would probably be game over right here. All right, he's running it. Here's my foolishness. A Caduceus. Uh, he has three link. Why did you res a Caduceus? Oh, why did I res a Caduceus against someone with three link? That was foolish. That was extremely foolish. Uh, it's an ice that does nothing. I just wasted three credits and a click and a credit and an install and a... Yeah, why did I do that? Why did I do that? <laughs> hmm, I did not learn my lesson. If someone has link... Don't install Caduceus's. Now, that being said, since he has so much Link and he has all three Icebreakers, why hasn't he even just run, you know, run R&D once a turn? Right? Alright, so I don't even bother with the Caduceus at all. Uh, he pays one credit to break Wraparound. I res another Ash. So I think he took six. So he trashes Ash and leaves the Sand Sand for another turn. Did I draw an agenda? I drew a Beal, no Astro scripts, but it's 5 nothing. No Astro scripts, but it is 5 to nothing. Now things get weird. He's got 5 credits. Now he's got 11 credits. He runs. I have boost the money trace in the Caduceus. I'm only down to two credits. That's trace five. He's not breaking it, because that would cost him his fairy, right? I guess he could use his fairy if he chose to. Uh, is he going to let me have the three credits? He pays two to keep me from having the credits. His link takes care of the end-the-run subroutine. He pays one. So by using my ability, even though he has three link, I made him pay three to run through the server, and then five to trash the sand sand. So he actually ended the turn two credits poorer than he began it, but I ended one sand sand less. Put in a new sand sand, and take money. All right, I just need to get money to use the new sand sand. It's going to be hard for him to trash it. Uh, or I guess he could let me... He could run in there and basically trash it for a click and six credits if he just lets me have my three credit subroutine on the Caduceus, which I think is a fair trade. All right, he's taking six and running again. I boost the money trace on the Caduceus again. He prevents me from having the money, which costs him two credits. Pays one. All right, 
He's gonna access. Yep, it's the Sand Sand again. Are you gonna pay five to trash it? Yes, you ended the turn two credits poorer than you ended the last turn because those were the two credits from my ability on the Caduceus. This really bad choice of ice install is actually mattering now. Install, take two credits. See, I'm not actually getting any poorer on these turns. I'm actually getting richer because my pad campaign has gone unmolested. Um, basically, I'm going to end the turn richer than I started, right? Pretty much no matter what here. Uh, if he takes six and runs again, he's either going to have to use his fairy to deal with Caduceus or let me have the three credits uh, if he wants to trash. If that's a third Sand Sand, <laughs> is that three Sand Sands in a row? Okay. He runs, he pays three to break all the ice. Uh, or doesn't he? And it's a Sand Sand. He's down to only four credits there. He doesn't have enough. He started with one. He took six. That's seven total credits. He ran, paid three. He could have just paid one, but he chose to not let me have three credits. Uh, leaving the Sand Sand alive. He should have let me have the three credits, but he didn't. I'm going to install... A new card on top of the Sand Sand. Is he going to take six and run again? It seems to be what he's doing almost every turn. Take six and run. There is a Jackson Howard, which I used to bring back Sand Sand, Sand Sand, and... Ash. Even with 3 Link, we already saw that Ash can be slightly effective. There's a Sand Sand. He trashes the third Sand Sand. Well, that's all three of them, but I just put two of them back in. Uh, and my deck is, is a little thin here. Uh, and I, I guess I, if I would have had an agenda in my hand, I would have scored it, right? Because I had one turn window there where the Sand Sand available and plenty of money to use it. So I guess my deck is just full of agendas now and Sand Sands. And he's not running it. He's not running R&D. Um, part of that's just, I guess, because every turn I put something in the remote and I'm at game point, right? It's five to nil. Uh, so if I put something in a remote, he absolutely has to go and take care of it. You know, if he runs R&D instead, or runs HQ instead, he has to score seven points that turn. Or, theoretically, uh, I'll just win. So, it's not wrong moves by him. It's just three Sand Sands in a row, consecutively. Boom, boom, boom. Did I manage to draw one of the two Sand Sands I jacksoned in? It looks like it. Install... Install and an ash, one of the ashes I put back. I only put one ash back in. I drew that and the sand sand. Well, I let him cut. You saw it. I shuffled well. See, he's only got two credits. Take six and run. I boost that first trace. He, doesn't let, he really doesn't want me to have the three credits, even though I'm so rich. Um... Which one would you like to access first? That one? That's Sand Sand. What's the other one? Oh, it's not Ash. It's NAPD. He scores it. Which means he lets me keep the Sand Sand. Right? So, he let me keep the Sand Sand, so I use it to score an Astro script. Now, actually, if you saw it was any, you know, it's like, what could the other card be, right? Uh, he could have trashed the Sand Sand, let the NAPD sit there, because on my mistake, I did not advance that NAPD. I could not have scored it the next turn. He could have come back for it the next turn, uh, if possible, right? Um, 
So because I made that mistake, right, he should have let the NAPD sit there, let me advance it, and then gone to take it. Um, but I might have been able to escape that situation as well. It's, it's tough to say. Regardless, he chose to not trash the sand sand and take the NAPD, um, which is what he would have had to do anyway if I had advanced the NAPD by one credit, uh, by one, like I should have, and then on the next turn, you know, he couldn't afford to, tra to score the NAPD and trash the sand sand, so I was going to keep one of them no matter what, uh, if I had made the correct play. And there you have it, that was the extremely long... Uh, round three of the Cambridge Netrunner Regional Tournament 2014. The first game, really exciting uh, with that one chance to score a future perfect. And the second game, kind of a slog every turn. Take six, run the remote, take six, run the remote. If he just would have let me take the three credits um, on the Caduceus uh, subroutine instead of paying two every time, that would, you know, he ran, took six and ran at least three times. That would have been eight credits there. He could have afforded to take the NAPD and the Sand Sand. And what would I have been able to do with that money without any Sand Sands to use it on? I guess I could have rezzed that toll booth, um, which might have allowed me to score uh, something. So, yeah, it's, it's, I, you know, as soon as I had the five points and he had zero, uh, I mean, the, at the final score was seven to two. But as soon as, as soon as the score got to that point, um, you know, he, he becomes unable to uh, run centrals or do anything over there uh, when I put something in the remote every single turn like that. And there you have it. So uh, I'm going to go take a work on round four of six. Uh, going into that round, I have one loss. So that means I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten. Yeah, I have ten prestige points, and that's that.